Hey guys, thank you for joining me again for another classic movie. This one's a little bit different to a lot of the things I've covered recently. Akira is a late 80s animated film from Japan, which takes place in a dystopian future, the year 2019, and adapted from a manga by Otomo. Otomo. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, I love animated Japanese films, but it's not my area of personal expertise, so I wasn't sure about talking about it here on my channel. But this is such a great film and one worth watching, so I thought I'd share it anyway in case some of you might see this and maybe be inspired to go watch it, especially if it's not the kind of thing you maybe normally watch. Um, that said, I just won't go into loads of history of manga or anime or anything like that because um, I don't want to get anything wrong. <laughs> I can say though that even if you don't always love animated films or haven't seen much Japanese cinema or whatever, this one is an amazing cult film in its own right. Akira is a post-apocalyptic cyberpunk action film. <laughs> um, as I said, set in the year 2019, uh, Kaneda is the leader of a gang of friends who ride motorcycles and get into fights with other gangs of kids who ride motorcycles. When his childhood friend Tatsuo is in an accident, he's taken to a hospital where the government uses him in an experiment. They mistakenly awaken a telekinetic force within him that threatens the lives of everyone in the city and is more powerful than anything they've ever seen, except for the powers of the mysterious Akira. <laughs> um, I say mistakenly awaken a tele telekinetic force. It's kind of intentional, but they don't mean to awaken something that they can't control. Um, so yeah, I was really lucky to see this on the big screen fairly recently when um, cinemas were still open here and it has had a recent remaster done. It's absolutely gorgeous and intense, um, but especially if you get to see it in theaters, um, it's amazing. Uh, cinemas are still closed here in my part of Canada. Um, so I really miss going to the movies, um, just miss it a lot, miss the smell of popcorn. <laughs> uh, this film had a huge budget and it really shows. It was, at the time, the most expensive anime ever made. Uh, I think it was the equivalent of 5.5 million in US dollars. Um, I don't know if that's adjusted for inflation or whatever, but it's a lot of money. Uh, this would be surpassed a year later by Kiki's Delivery Service, which is also a film that I love, and I'm kind of tempted to maybe cover it um, as well. The atmosphere and style of this film is incredible. The city it's set in is called Neo Tokyo, so like a new Tokyo built on the old one after a mysterious apocalypse destroyed everything. It's a concrete jungle with neon colors and, uh, and lights industrial and cold in some ways. A little bit reminiscent of like Blade Runner or even a neon Gotham in some some shots. It's rendered beautifully in a like sfumato of color and light with notes of Japanese no influenced music. It's startling and yet it also feels familiar and kind of it's kind of alienating. It's not like it's not a place that kind of draws you in or feels cozy or anything like that. It's kind of, yeah. Which is perfect because the disaffected youth of Neo Tokyo are alienated too. While the parallels to the after effects of the Hiroshima bombing are kind of obvious, there's also like the loneliness and rage of repressed emotion and angry destructive teens to contend with. The book, um, A Thousand and One Movies, makes the connection that teens are like raw emotion and that Tetsuo's powers take over when his huge feelings are triggered, which I think was kind of interesting. Only the government held telepaths can control their powers by being chemically kept young and innocent before those kind of big raw feelings um, become apparent in the post pubescent teen, I guess. There's an underbelly of teen rebellion in Neo Tokyo that literally threatens the uneasy peace that the previous generation and the military has created. Kaneda 
in his very stylish and very 80s red motorcycle leathers is really the poster kit of this film. He's the protagonist and he's the he's literally the person on the poster, which I guess is like maybe kind of confusing because I always used to think that he was Akira because he's on the poster and he's the protagonist, but you don't even kind of know much like Akira is kind of a mystery to like well into the film. Uh, Tetsuo was his best friend, but also kind of felt rivalry and jealousy for him um, because he's more popular and kind of the leader. So sometimes he wants to destroy him, but Kaneda is also the one person that Tetsuo can trust and he's the person that he calls out to when he's scared and wants help. Kaneda does all that he can to help his friend, but the strange powers may kill them both in the process. It's hard to describe the visuals of this film. They're powerful, strange, arresting, stunning, sometimes beautiful, sometimes dark, and often quite surreal. The scenes on the bikes are really something, uh, but then later scenes of destruction and mutation are really something else. Um, the terrifying scenes of Tetsuo in the hospital as things around him come to life are like they're wonderful but they're also frightening and primal in some way so this film is really it's a work of art more than most films are i like the creation of character through style and clothing it's kind of got like an 80s cool aesthetic and it's futuristic and bright but then there's also that like really odd young old kind of thing that the telepathic children that are helped by the government have they're like they're like raisins <laughs> it's weird um so it's kind of hard to describe like it's all these things at once i haven't read the manga that it's adapted from but i understand that the movie takes the style and characters from it but changes the plot a lot and leaves out a lot of things so um i'll have to read it one day and see the film tackles some big things from core feelings like friendship and belonging and like teen rebellion to massive global ones like the fear of the next generation, the apocalypse, the future, you know, themes of kind of world destruction and government. So there are some big themes. Uh, it's amazing how they're all rendered for us in like an animation and visual kind of style. A lot of it is... Um, things that you imply from the visuals. The film's been hugely influential and gained a real cult following more internationally when it hit the VHS market and had some uh, limited releases in cinemas and things. Because of this, it really introduced a lot of people to Japanese pop culture and anime and things like that. Things that we kind of see every day now that were much harder to find then. Um, it's definitely one of the best science fiction or cyberpunk films made, and it's an important film in the history of Japanese animation, so there's nothing else quite like Akira, and if you can, I highly recommend that you see it. Thanks for watching.